Have you ever wondered who owns the forests of Michigan? The answer may surprise you. Almost half of Michigan forests are owned by private landowners just like you. That's a pretty big deal because it means that Michigan residents can have a direct impact on our forests. In fact, if you take a look at the big picture and zoom into the Great Lakes region, you'll see that all of Michigan's upper peninsula and most of the northern lower is covered with trees, almost 20 million acres of forested land. But they're not all the same forest. You see, Michigan has different types of forests depending on where you live. In fact, there's at least a half dozen different types of forest ecosystems in Michigan. What does that mean to you? It means that you and your forested land are more important than you think. And the choices you make on your land may affect your local forest community. The Michigan Forest Association has produced this video with a grant from the U.S. Forest Service to help answer some common questions you may have about your trees, woodlands, or forest land. Let's start with some basic myths about Michigan forests. Well, one of them is that forests are disappearing, uh, which in some parts of the world is true, but when we look at the lake states and even the United States and Canada as a whole, it's, it's not true. So in a given year, we're actually adding 50% more timber to our forest lands volume-wise than what we're harvesting. So we're not deforesting by cutting trees. We're growing more than we're harvesting. And by cutting the trees, we're having a healthier forest. I've heard all my life that we're gonna be running out of trees. Nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, we have more trees now today than we had 50 years ago and uh, uh, we'll have more 50 years from now uh, than we have now. The trees on your property are an amazing resource. You value them for their beauty, the privacy they provide, and the recreational opportunities they make possible. And like most people, you probably want to see your woods stay the way they are. But are there opportunities you are overlooking? What would happen if you actively managed your forest? When you manage a forest, you get more stuff than when you don't manage a forest. You can define stuff. It could be revenue. We shouldn't underestimate the importance of money. But there's revenue, there's timber quality, there's forest health. We can alter wildlife habitat in directions that the owner chooses. We can have increased recreational opportunities. Uh, you get better air quality, better water protection. There's all sorts of what I call products and services of forests. And if you manage those, you encourage those, you're going to get more of them. Why should we try to manage it? And uh, you know, it's. Not that the woods really need us. We, they'll do just fine. They've been doing fine for thousands of years without our management. But if we want to get the best results, uh, see the, the habitat that for whatever species are important to us, then, uh, then a management uh, plan and a, a scheme to know where you want to go and how to get there, th those are really important things. If you're thinking about managing your forest, where do you start? Well, a good way to start is to find a consulting forester in your area. A consulting forester is a forest management expert. They work for you, and their job is to help improve your forest based on what is most important to you. Once a landowner uh, makes the initial contact, usually we set up a meeting to uh, to visit his woods to see what his resource condition is. Uh, from there, uh, he has uh, the opportunity to have me back to write a management plan, to uh, out outline the specific steps that uh, he, what he needs to do to uh, improve the habitat or improve his timber condition or improve the forest health. The management plan is a long-term document. Every management plan is different because every piece of land is different. And your professional forest manager is gonna assist you with achieving the goals and objectives that you have together worked out for your property. And those goals will be different for every piece of property. Some may include recommendations for an immediate harvest. 
Some might include recommendations for a future harvest. Most will likely include recommendations for non-harvest areas, perhaps the development of a wildlife pond or food plots for wildlife habitat. I like to, uh, to think that we could leave the, the land in a little bit better shape than we found it, and I think that's the essence of it. And I just love the uh, opportunity to uh, help somebody see that potential in their woods and, uh, and help them move in that direction. And that, I think, is the essence of what, what we're doing, is trying to leave it a little better shape than we found it. And that's the most important message of forest management. It's about looking at what you love most about your woods and making it even better. Sure, you might make some money along the way, but most landowners aren't in it just for the money. They love their woods, and if actively managing forests can make them even better, then why not give it a try? For more information on how to get started, visit michiganforests.org. Remember, Michigan landowners are in this together. Encourage your neighbors to learn more about forest management too. Together, we can improve Michigan forests for generations to come.